Hello and welcome to Time Valley Motorhomes. This is your handover on your Eldis Accord 135. Go. At the back of the vehicle, in the locker, is your where your hookup point is and battery, leisure battery lives. So use the key, the Trimark key. Open the locker. In here you have your hookup and your leisure battery. So to hook the vehicle up, use the hookup lead, pull the lead, pull the flap back and slide it onto the hookup. You can then put the hookup lead into the groove and lock the locker. Coming down the vehicle, you have your alloy wheels, your fridge vent covers, your awning, your vent for your microwave, and in, and in here you have your LPG, so this is where your two six kilogram gas bottles can live. So hand tighten, left hand thread, turn on the, the top of the bottle and do strap the bottles in. We advise when traveling, you turn the bottles off. Same key opens the gas locker as the battery locker. You have your fly screen and blackout blind on the habitation door. Awning. Once inside the vehicle, you'll be wanting to put power on. This will be determined whether you're hooked up or not. So if you are hooked up, you'll have 240 and you'll be able to use the household plugs, three pin plug. If not, you will just have 12 volt of the leisure battery. So when you come in, you press this button here. This will then give you power. You've then got your interior lights, like so. And then they are all individually switched around the vehicle. You've got your awning light, which is your light above your door here. So if you're sitting out in the awning on a lovely summer's evening and you want the light on, you can, or simply you go off for a walk, you put your light on so it's easier to find the van. The pump here surfaces your taps and your toilet and your shower. So you must have the pump on, otherwise you, the water will have no pressure and will just die off. But only make sure you put the pump on when you've got enough water in the tank. If you haven't got the water, any water on board, don't put the pump on because you can damage it. So to see how much water you've got on board, press and hold this and it'll light up. So you've got a full tank of fresh water. And then next to it is your leisure battery and your leisure battery is fully charged. This will drop down ever so slightly if you are hooked up, it will give a, a full reading and then it'll give a truer reading when you're unhooked. And then this light here is just your main entrance light. Underneath you've got your wheel heating system and hot water system. So you've got hot water and heating. So if you come to off and we'll start from the beginning. So if you press the hot water, you've got one kilowatt of electric. So if you are on a smaller site that um, doesn't allow, or simply the vehicle is tripping, you might have to turn things down on electric. That's if you have got access to electric. You've then got two kilowatts of electric. So you would normally use two kilowatts of electric if you are on a site, you wouldn't want to waste your gas. So you would use two kilowatts of electric. Going on, you've got gas on its own. So if you are wild camping and you weren't hooked up, you can use gas, so this will heat your water. Or you'll use gas in one kilowatt of electric or gas in two kilowatts of electric. You would use gas in two kilowatts of electric in the winter months or if you wanted hot, hot water quicker for showers or dishes, you could use gas in two kilowatts of electric just to get the water hot quicker. Underneath, you've got a picture of a van. This is your heating. So you've got off, one kilowatt of electric, two kilowatts of electric, three kilowatts of electric. So if you are on a site, don't waste your gas, use the electric. If 
you don't mind waiting a little bit longer for it to heat up. If you do want um, your van to be warm quicker, especially in the winter months, use both sources together. Give it 20 minutes or so and then turn off the gas and let the electric carry it. You've got gas on its own if you were while camping and you weren't, didn't have any um, electric hookup. And then you have got gas and electric together. Like I was saying, if you do want the van to be warmer quicker, use both sources. The plus and the minus is your temperature. So the top is 30 degrees. In the middle there is about 15 and you can then turn it down. We do advise that you turn the systems off. You can hear the heat in the way there now, the fans. You turn it off, you allow the fan to go quiet before the, you start the engine as this gives the boiler system the time to do its correct cycle to closing down. It is a good idea to go out and buy some spare blade fuses from Halfords or Eurocar parts or similar shop just in case anything does blow a fuse you can fix it when on your holidays and the small rocker switch below is your tank heaters so in the winter months if you put your tank heaters on this will put a come through the water and stop any freezing when the vehicle is being used like i said in the winter when it's not being used you need to drain the systems down completely leave no water in the vehicle as frost damage can split pipes crack tanks and break boilers and this is your hot water working to operate your Dometic fridge with small freezer compartment you've got three settings here so this is your energy source you've got off you've got the plug which is 240 means electric when hooked up you've got a battery which is a 12 volt setting which only works when the engine is running it will send a feed from the alternator um, which is designed to keep this fridge at the same temperature it was when departing so if you can get this van if you are keeping the van at home or you can get it near home before the day you depart hook it up go out and get your shopping fill your fridge with your shopping leave it overnight and then when you come to depart just put it onto the battery setting and it'll just keep the fridge at the temperature it was when departing which means that no matter how long you travel your food should be Nice and fresh when you get to your site. Down below is your gas, and this is your temperature. So if you push your temperature gauge in and your sparker here, you'll see the orange band go into the green. Once it's in the green, release, and that is your fridge away on gas. And like I said, this is your temperature of your fridge, so being warm going to cold colder and when winterizing your fridge do clean it out and then just use and leave it all ajar but when you're traveling you can use this catch here which locks it and that's your travel catch above your fridge you've got your wardrobe this is where this is your mattress Topper for your single bed, which I'll show you in a moment. You've got your adapter for when using uh, foreign appliances. You've got your electric hookup cable. Your tablets, one of them down the toilet each time you change the cassette. And your Fetford toilet roll, so it is design to use your cassette to use motorhome pacific toilet paper because andrex and things swells when wet this doesn't and that can block the cassette you've got your aerial booster at the back so that dial there turns the signal up if you can't get a signal or turns it down if the signal's too strong and when traveling loosen the nut off And pull the aerial in make sure it is pulled in when traveling and then you can use this to swivel the aerial round but if you are struggling to get a 
picture on the TV when on site, you can push it up, swivel it round. The tip is just to look for where the other motorhome caravans are pointing, point yours in the same direction, and it shouldn't take you that long to find a signal. On this side, you've got your solar panel. So it is, it's got two batteries, one being your leisure, one being your Peugeot engine battery. And below, you can see the voltage. You can then change this from, at the minute it's charging 50-50, as shown. You can change that to 70-30 and prioritize the battery you want. So either the leisure when in use or when standing the engine battery. Coming round here, you've got your 4G Wi-Fi system. So this is this is all connected to the antenna on the roof, which takes a pay-as-you-go SIM. So what I'd do is I'd go to your phone provider and ask for a pay-monthly data-only SIM. You can get really good deals on these, some of them even unlimited, and then when you use a van, you can use your phones, tablets for um, using social media and or using Netflix. But to get, take, peel the back off. I'll just pop you down when I peel the back off in a moment. Peel the back off. SIM card lives underneath the battery and your pin for connecting your Wi-Fi key. If you're just pinning that cord, you can then connect your devices to your 4G Hawaii, Hawaii internet system. To make the rear bed, simply lift up above the carpets and slide out. Slide this one to meet in the middle, like so, and use the backrest of the cushion. So your backrests, the cushion, place that in the middle, like so. And same with the other one, into here, and that'll create your double bed across the van. A good idea to turn all cushions upside down so you get the flat back, no bull nose of the cushion, no um, creases in the cushions. You can then sheet them with a fitted sheet and put your duvet on and that is your double bed. Above you've got your storage, so to open your lockers, press down on this catch and then you can get into them. And you've got your reading lights, so as long as your light main master switch is put on on the control panel, they then are all individually switched. Your blinds, so you've got your fly screen pushed down, push down and clip in your blind, and then open the window, lift the levers, and tighten with these to keep the windows out. Do make sure all windows and skylights are closed when traveling, and to open this, press the button in, pull the lever back, you can then put it into the two grooves on either side. If it's a nice sunny day and you want a light breeze, you then do have a fly screen and a blackout blind. To operate your toilet, make sure the pump's on. Press the blue button. It'll then draw water through for the flush. To open the trap door into the cassette, use the grey slide on the side open it and that gives access to the cassette if this is open when trying to pull the cassette out the side of the vehicle it won't come out because the trap door must be shut the slide on the top there you've got a picture a diagram of a cassette when the wheel goes red the cassette indi is indicating it is full and requires being changed emptied You've got your heater duct in there when heating not, when your heating is on. So this is a good place to hang wet coats. Put your wet boots in here on because it'll dry because it's the smallest place in the van. It gets really warm. You've got your toiletry 
cupboard. This is just a sponge for cleaning the plastic lined shower tray. And you've got a small sample bottle of Chem Blue, Aqua Chem Blue from Fedfed, which is the liquid. So one cap full of liquid in the cassette and that is ready to go. The shower screen will clip on there. You've got this fly, fly screen on there with a blackout blind, but you've also got your skylight right you open one side at a time, depending on which wind which way the wind's blowing, or together if it's after you've had a nice hot shower and it's quite steamy in here. Plug on the sink, just push down, and then you do have your shower head. Like I said, when winterizing, take this off the tap, leave the mixer tap open, and lie that in the shower tray so any water that is in the pipe will cascade out. To make your front bed, remove this table by simply loosening these off your boom arm table and lifting out. Like so. Place this in the cab if you are using the third bed. Then spin the driver's seat by using the arm right the way around and you and push back as far as it will go against the steering wheel. So if the steering wheel has been pulled out, push the steering wheel back and out. Pull the extension out from underneath the bench seat. Place the cushion, infill cushion into here, and then you can then use your mattress topper for the single a single bed like so. To open this skylight above the kitchen area if you just pull down pull your weight down and slide you then do have a blackout and a fly screen on there. Like I said make sure these are closed fully and make sure the arms are into the plastic clips when traveling. Front screen you've got Remus blinds again you've got this on the side Depress the two little uh, buttons in, push them towards one another. That will then free it. Again, because this has got a, um, a rain sensor on, you notice the cutout there. And then again, do the same with the opposite side and they magnetize together. To put it back, push it in, push that down, and that clicks in. Passenger side, or sort of say the, uh, the window on the driver and passenger side slides along and again magnetizes you have that repeat that on both sides and then to put it back again it just slides and again just be careful and then it just clips back in in terms of the cab what we have is the radio obviously you've got your power button tuner Air conditioning button again this is your uh, heater control from cool to hot fan speed and again this is how they want to recirculate or where you want the air to go six speed gearbox way in which we select reverse lift up the, um, the the little knob and then that will allow you then to select reverse hazard central locking so that will lock both cab doors and again that's for your heated uh, mirrors on the steering wheel, you do have volume control and also telephone. 
just over here on the right hand side you've got two things one is just down here this is access to your fuse box so again if anything does go off that's where your fuses are located and then on here you've got your mode so again that will allow you to select um, date time etc just shown on there and on the stalks you've got your cruise control located here uh, indicators and lights and wipers.